Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Like any law enforcement agency, the Highway Patrol encounters many unforeseen obstacles in apprehending the criminal who is at large and dangerous to a community and its citizens. Many times it is the citizen himself who unwittingly aids the criminal in his flight from the law. Such was the case when on October 7th, Irv Desmond, having been unsuccessful in his attempt at robbing a drugstore, killed a pharmacist. For four days, Desmond had eluded the patrol. Time and again, he had been tracked down. Time and again, he was able to avoid capture due to the unintentional help of a citizen. He had now been traced to the outskirts of the small farming community of Littleton, where Patrolman Norton had discovered the stolen car Desmond had abandoned. Doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the car. Must have figured it was too well known. Yeah, it's still warm. It's hard to figure this guy. Only thing we know is he doesn't like to travel alone. How big is the next town up ahead? It only exists to service the farmers in this area. We can check it out in no time. There's a lot of open country around here. Get on the radio. Have them send two units out as soon as possible if they can spare them. That'll give us more men to flush Desmond out. Now, we're going into town. When we get there, I'll take the left side, you take the right. Okay. Norton, you'll get to the other side of the town and work in. Notify everybody you see what's going on. Give them a description of Desmond. Right. Highway Patrol. I'm uh, Henry Beckerley, and this is Sam and Ali Wood. How do you do? Have some breakfast? No, thanks. We're looking for a man to kill a pharmacist over in Smithersville. We think he's in this area. Did you hear that, Ellie? A killer here in a little bit. Well, I declare. What makes you think he's in these parts, Mr. Matthews? Yeah, isn't anything around Littleton that would interest him? Well, we've been tracking him for quite a while. We lost him somewhere around here. What's his name? His name is Desmond. He's a tall, good-looking fellow, about 35. You wouldn't take him for a killer at all. I saw a man this morning, Sam, as we came from the farm. No, that was the elderly boy. <laughs> He's always uh, traipsing over someplace and not coming back till the next day. Sure, that was the elderly boy, Ellie. I saw him myself. You know that my wife has seen that boy every day for the past 20 years and still don't recognize him. And you know what? When she sees her daughter's children today, she won't recognize Sam. them. But if we see that killer, Mr. Matthews, we'll sure let you know. Thanks very much. We'd appreciate it. Now, all of you go about your business as usual. But please, be careful. Thanks again. Thank you, sir. this far from down south. First thing I know when I get out of the car, why, this patrol fellow comes up and starts asking me and the driver some questions about a killer that's on the loose. Anybody seen him? No. He killed a man in Smittersville, but that's quite some distance away from here. He could have taken off in the other direction. Maybe so. I guess it's a pretty tough job tracking down these criminals. Now, you take that young fellow Matthews in here a while ago. Not the least bit excited, just as calm as anything. 
And the way he acted, they're not worried at all. They know they're going to get him. Oh, I hope so. Where are you from, young man? Southern part of the state, ma'am. On our way up to the city to get a job. You, uh, you folks live around here? Yep, for over 30 years. Oh. Better stay around a little longer. You may have some fireworks here in Littleton. Not likely, Henry. We'll have enough fireworks for the three grandchildren to have. I guess you're having that. My, Ellie, we gotta go. Henry, how much do we owe you? Oh, that'll be from 96 cents. Uh, you wouldn't know of anybody that's heading up toward the city this morning, would you? We're going as far as we've ever been. We'll give you a look that far, if you like. Oh, that'd be swell. Sure, young man. You just finish your breakfast, so we'll wait for you outside. Mm. The sooner I get up to the city and get a job, the happier I'll be. There you are. Thanks. No, sir. I checked with everybody I saw clear up to the cutoff. Not a sign of them. McWilliams or Fleming uncover anything? No, not a thing. But they got a lot of territory to cover. Get in your car. Patrol the whole area. Keep in contact with us. He and I will help out McWilliams and Fleming. This hour of the day, the farmers ought to be out in the field and busy. This will give Desmond a chance to hold up in one of their houses, and I don't want that to happen. Go on. Take off. Somebody should have spotted Desmond by now. It's been about an hour since we've been to town. Let's check it again. There's something nice to know that it's just between you and the soil. Oh, and even in the hard times, we've had our ups and downs. But the good Lord has been mighty good to us, wouldn't you say, Ellie? Yes, Sam, but Mr. Williams might not be cut out to do farming. Uh, isn't that the road to Medford intersecting up ahead there? Yes, it is. Well, uh, well, maybe I'll take your advice, Mr. Brown. You see, the only farmer in our family is my uncle, and, and he lives up here in, in Medford. You know, while I'm in the area, I think I'll go in and talk to him. You people seem very happy. You make a farm and a good woman sound mighty fine. Well, you won't be sorry, my good fellow. Yes, sir. And don't you worry, if you decide to farm, that good woman will come along soon enough. <laughs> well, it certainly has been wonderful meeting both of you. I can't begin to tell you how much I appreciate it. Oh, think nothing of it, son, and good luck to you. And if you're through Littleton sometime, you just look us up. You bet I will. Thanks, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Mrs. Brown? Did you find him? No, not yet. You sure there were no strangers around here this morning? No, only the Browns that were here and that young fellow that you talked to outside. What young fellow? The young fellow that you talked to in the car. He said... Where is he now? Why, he went to... Uh, he went with the Browns to ride to River Bend. It couldn't be that he... What kind of a car were they driving? Why, it was a new green half-ton truck. Sam just got it. Where in River Bend? Why, they were going to visit their daughter. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Matthews, uh, I, I, I didn't... All right, all right. Now just simmer down and answer a few questions, will you? Did you ever see this guy before? No, but he was a nice sort of a looking young fellow and he talked about the killer. It, it never dawned upon me that he could have been the killer. Ella and Sam felt the same way about it. They thought it was just a young fellow passing through. How long ago did they leave? Well, about 20 minutes ago. What's the address in Riverbend? Uh, it's, it's their daughter. Uh, the name is Eldridge. All right, get on the phone. Tell her to go to send another unit to the Eldridge house in Riverbend. Mr. Matthews, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I should have known. You don't think he'll do any harm to Sam and Ella, do you? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know. Keep your fingers crossed.
Desmond had again slipped through a tight net the patrol had set for him. But knowing he would eventually be traced to the Browns, he smartly and smoothly discarded them. You in charge here? What? I said you in charge here. Yeah, what do you want? Well, I saw a sign back there. It said you need day laborers. You don't look much like a day laborer. I'll change your clothes and I will. Oh, I'm big. My hands are strong. All right, I need a pair of hands to help move some concrete bricks. You get $12 a day and you'll work. You understand? Good enough. Come on. Have him fill out the papers and then get him some work clothes. The girl will take care of you. Then report to me. And get those reports typed. Nice guy. Would you fill this out, please? I think he can use you for three days, but one day with him and you'll be ready to leave. Oh, I don't know. You've been kind enough to warn me. That'll make things a lot easier. Funny. You don't seem at all like the, the ordinary day laborer type. Well, there are those days when you've got to eat. <laughs> no, you're right, though. See, I put everything I had into a little business down south. Lost all of it. Now I'm working my way back to the city. Then I'll get a fresh start. Oh, I know what you mean. I took this job so that I could save some money. And I end up working for a man like Grundy. Mm. He's so miserable. Here. And John Williams. Mm -hmm. All right, John. You'll find some work clothes in a locker and bath. Here's the key. Thanks. Well, at least with you around, there'll be some pleasantness. Say, uh, if you can provide the car, I can provide the lunch. All right. Good. But I don't understand, Mr. Matthews. He seemed like such a nice, fine young fellow, and he did us no harm. Ain't that right, Ellie? Are you sure you got the right fellow? Yeah, he's the right man. Do you know why he got off at Medford Junction? He has said he had an uncle up in Medford who farmed. He said he was going to go up there and talk to him. He said we made farming sound pretty good. That's what he said, Mr. Matthews. I guess we're lucky. I mean that he didn't do us any harm. Hey, you sure are. I hope the people are with now are just as lucky. Thanks very much. Well, let's go. Twenty-one fifty to thirty-eight twenty-two and thirty-eight forty-six. Go ahead, twenty-one fifty. I'm proceeding to intersection, Highway forty-four and Medford Road. Thirty-eight twenty-two, stay on Medford Road to Medford. Thirty-eight forty-six, take opposite direction. Stay in contact. Ten four. Ten four. Okay, Williams, one hour for lunch. Hi. Well, uh, I look like a worker now, don't I? Oh, yes. <laughs> How about our lunch? Well, I can't leave just yet until Mr. Grundy gets back. He watches the office during lunch hour. Oh, good. Well, uh, that'll give me a chance to change my clothes and freshen up a bit. Uh, where's your car? I'll meet you there. It's the brown convertible just in back of the office. Good. I'll see you in a few minutes. All right. Did you get those reports typed up yet? No, sir. We'll get them typed up as soon as you get back from lunch. Yes, Mr. Grundy. I will. Hi. All set? Yes. So good to get out of here, even if it's only for an hour. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> 
Uh-oh. I left my wallet back in the locker room. Look, why don't you drive the car around? I'll only be back in a minute, all right? All right. Good. What do you want, Williams? Okay, Mr. Big Guy. Stop eating long enough to open that safe. Just who do you think you're... Come on, don't give me any of your lip. Open that safe before I blow a hole in your stomach as big as the one in your head. Come on, move! Keep you waiting. Little restaurant down the street. What do we say we eat down there? All right. Good. Patrol knew only that Desmond was last seen at the Medford Road, Highway 44 intersection. Matthews and Sergeant Corey began a systematic search of the vicinity for any sign of Desmond. General stores, gas stations, all buildings and people in the area were checked out. Nothing. That was a smart move on Desmond's part, losing the Browns before they got to the destination, but why this area? There's got to be a half a dozen crossroads between here and Middleton. What we know about Desmond, he doesn't do anything without a reason. Well, we know he'll want a car and money. Seeing as it's Desmond, he'll want a companion. He killed the pharmacist for money, didn't get any. As far as we know, up to now, he hasn't even picked up a thin dime. What do you say we take a look down the highway? Maybe something caught his eye. Might catch yours. Might be it. Could give him everything he needs. Cash here, it's gone now. What happened? Williams, he slugged me, took the cash. That gun had got me in the jaw and it killed me. Are you all right? I think so, it got me in the neck. Take a look around outside. Right. What's your name? Grundy, I, I'm the foreman here. How long ago did this happen? About 20 minutes ago. This guy that slugged you, you say his name was Williams? Yeah, took the petty cash, about $80. I only hired him this morning. Didn't you look at his identification before you hired him? No, I needed a pair of strong hands. This guy, was he tall, good-looking, about 35? Yeah, that's the guy. Wish I had my hands on him right now. You got any idea where he went? No. The girl that works for me. She was kind of taken up with him. What girl? Keefe. Susan Keefe. Has she got a car? Yeah, she's got a car. What kind? A uh, convertible, a brown one. Not a sign of him. I'll make a note. Another ACB on Desmond. Have the fellows cover all points in this area. He might be traveling with a gal in a brown convertible. Describe her, will he? Well, about 25, 26. Oh, come on, Mr. Grundy. You've got to do better than that. Well, 
brown hair, or about five foot four or five, kind of silly looking. You have a doctor take a look at that neck of yours. I'll send an officer back to get a full report, and next time, look out for who you hire. Desmond's got everything he needs, car, money, and a girlfriend. He's probably headed back for the city. If you don't pick him up before he gets there, we'll lose him again. Come on, let's roll. forward to seeing Grunty again, huh? Let's not talk about him. Not just yet, anyway. We still have a few minutes. You're a swell girl, Susan. I wish we'd met some other place. Some other place? Why some other place? You said it this morning. After just one day with Grundy, I've had enough. I can't go back there, Susan. It isn't worth $12 a day to, to put up with that man. No, I'd be better off in the city, taking my chances. Until I get back on my feet again. But you need the money, John. Twelve dollars? Sure. It'd take care of me for a couple of days, but... I'd rather starve than put up with Grundy. The only trouble is... Well, you've been awfully nice to me, Susan. And, well, I don't even like the idea of your working for him. You know, you'd be better off in the city, too. But you're an intelligent girl, Susan. Why, you wouldn't have any trouble at all getting a job. And with nice people. Why don't you come with me, Susan? Come on, I have friends. Won't you come with me? Oh, I'd like to, John. But I can't just leave my job without giving some kind of a notice or something. That might be it. Hey, you, mister. Get over here. Come on. Fast. Take that apron off. Come on, move, I said. Now get this and get it straight because your lives depend on What's it. What's all this about? Shut up. Now listen, in just a few minutes, there's going to be a cop coming in here. He's going to ask you some questions. And when he does, you better give him the right answers. Now, her name is Susan Keith, and she works for the Concrete Brick Company. So do you, mister. You're a day laborer, and the two of you are just about for lunch. Now, if he asks you anything about a John Williams, all you know is that he works at the company with you, but you haven't seen him since lunch. Now, sit down and shut up. This gun's going to be on you all the time, and I hope you two are good actors. This is it, all right. Registered to Susan Keith. We can't be sure the gal's with him. I'll go in the front way. You go in the back. Keep me covered. You're the move. Stand up. Hands behind your head. Come on. You're Susan Kidd? Yes. yes, I am. What's the trouble? What's your name? Smith. Charles Smith. What's the matter? You work at the brick company, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a day laborer. How long have you been there? Uh, about three weeks. You know a man by the name of John Williams? Yes. Yes, he works there, too. He's a day laborer. He just started this morning. All right, you can put your hands down. When's the last time you saw him? Just before we came to lunch. You haven't seen him since? All right, thanks very much. You can sit down now. All right, Johnson, take it. Send for the evidence. How'd you know which one? Well, they were too nervous. He said he was a laborer. Look at his face. He's as pale as a ghost. I don't understand. Well, he was wanted for murder. Murder? Oh, but he was... Yeah, sure, I know. He seemed like such a nice guy. Next week's Highway Patrol story is a very unusual one. I hope you'll be with us. 
Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Bradrick Crawford saying, see you next week. <laughs>